We're going to cover some real basics in this chapter, but as always, you still might learn something new. To start, we're going to learn how to create folders. To do that, we have to go under the File menu. Did you know that there are two different ways to access menus? One way is to click once on the menu name, move the mouse down to your selection, and click again. Another way is to click and hold the mouse button down until you're over your selection, and then let go. It's a simple thing, but it's nice to know that you can work either way on a Mac. There's also two ways of renaming a folder. The first way is to click directly on the name, wait a second, click one more time, and then type your folder name. The other way is to click anywhere on the icon and hit return on your keyboard. I think the second way is faster, but to each their own. To move items into a folder, just click on an item, hold the mouse button down, and drag the item over a folder, and then let go of the mouse button. If you want to open a document or an application, just double click on the icon. A JPEG by default opens the preview application. To quit an application, press Command Q. To view a document without opening any applications, you can select the document and hit the space bar to open Quick Look. From here, you can even choose to open the document in its recommended application. To close a preview window without clicking on the X, press Command W. Now let's double click again on this handsome little guy here so I can show you a few more things. To move an open window, just click and hold on a blank or gray area of the window and let go when you're done moving it. Some applications have blank areas at the top, bottom, and even the sides of the window. Let's check out these window buttons on the top left. First, let me show you the green button. This is called the zoom button, and on some applications when you click it, the application will almost go full screen, leaving just enough space for the dock. In this case, when I click it, it just bounces the window over to the left. If you're a Windows user, you might be a bit confused right now, but this button is definitely not broken. Let me resize this window for a second and I'll show you. I'm going to resize my window by clicking and dragging on any side of the window. Now when I click on the zoom button, my window switches between the two different views. If I want to temporarily put something away but not close it, I can click on the yellow minimize button to send it to the dock. To get it back, just click on the miniature version of your window on the dock. By the way, I don't know why you can do this, but it looks cool, so I'll show you. If you click the Minimize button while holding Shift on your keyboard, the window slowly slides down to the dock. We'll talk more about window animation in another chapter. Finally, the red button will close the window. But why does the preview application look like it's still open if I closed my document? Well, the short answer is that by clicking the red button, we only close the active window, not the preview application. To quit an application and close all of its open windows, click on the application name on the top left and select Quit. You can also, of course, use Command Q. In this area down here beside the Document stack and the Download stack, we can drop any document onto the dock for quick access. We'll talk about this more in another chapter, but for now it's important to know that you can't drag documents to the application side of the dock. Make sure when you're moving documents or applications around the dock that you don't accidentally drag them off the dock. If you do, don't worry, that doesn't mean you deleted anything, only the icon from the dock. Now you simply have to find the document or application again and drag it back to the dock. In this case, it's easy. All I have to do is find the application in the launch pad, grab it, and drop it back on the dock. Problem solved. So that's just the basics. Every chapter will get a little more advanced along the way, so try to watch the chapters in order if you can. Feel free to flip through the chapters individually if you want, but just know you might be missing a vital piece of information that relates to the chapter. So try not to skip around too much or you might get lost.